hydraulic system for the M6 Avalanche is located on the, uh, on the back of the truck body. The hydraulic system, of course, is consists of the left manifold and the right manifold, which is actually two separate manifolds together. When the uh, hydraulic pump is actually engaged, then the pressure is coming out actually to the left side manifold and of course as needed the uh, right side manifold actually gets the pressure from the left to operate the functions on the right. So uh, on the left manifold of course we have the uh, four motor valves that is at the bottom of the, uh, of the uh, manifold. We have the reverse, the elevator reverse which is the uh, the, uh, the little block that is bolted into the side of the left side manifold and of course we have the uh, hydraulic uh, uh, cylinder functions on the top. On the right side manifold of course we have different kinds of, uh, of uh, operations which actually we're going to uh, talk about shortly. Now a lot of times of course there's going to be a situation to where A lot of times, of course, there's going to be a situation to where the hydraulics are not operating. Any kind, any time that you have an issue with the hydraulic functions, the first thing that you have to do is, of course, to check the, the pressures coming out of the hydraulic pump. Now, on the M6 Avalanche, there's actually two types of M6 Avalanche. It's going to be the twin engine and the single engine. In this situation here, we've got a single engine uh, uh, M6 Avalanche, which means that it does not have the auxiliary motor on the, on the side. So, whenever we engage the PTO, then of course we can actually check the pressures coming out of the pump. So, in that situation, we're gonna check two pressures. We're gonna check the standby pressure and the main relief. The standby pressure is the pressure that the, the the, the pump contains at all times before it is actually engaged to pressurize. So the standby pressure for the M6 Avalanche is arranged somewhere around 350 to 400 pounds. Their main relief pressure it is at 3000 psi. Now how we do that? In order to do that we have to start the engine that will be the the truck engine and then engage the PTO. I started the engine, I engaged the PTO, and now of course we have to read the standby pressure without actually engaging any kind of hydraulic functions. So at this point what we have it is 500 PSI pressure. Now, in order to read the main relief pressure, we have, what we have to do is we have to lock the auxiliary flow valve. Now that it's locked, now I can read the main relief pressure of the system. Right now it reads 3100 PSI. So if the pressure is not 3000 PSI, of course, if it's only 3000, it's okay. But if the pressure is below 2,000 PSI, then we have a problem with the, with the pump itself. Now, once the pressure is read, we have to unlock the auxiliary flow valve right away. Let's take a look at the uh, electrical system on the, uh, on the M6 Avalanche. This is the main control box. Okay, now one thing that it needs to be uh, said and is very, very important when it comes to the uh, control box. As you can see here, it says, do not high pressure or steam clean that box. Now, even though the cover is actually, it's actually sealed, it's got, a, it's got a seal, still needs to be, the pressure washing and the steam clean needs to be away from that, from that box. The next one, of course, is that uh, uh, a warning to where if for some reason you need to do any kind of welding on the um, on the uh, on the on this uh, sweeper always you need to make sure that the batteries are disconnected so you don't make you don't have a serious uh, failure on the control box not only on this one but also on the control box of the uh, of the chassis itself 
So we're going to take, we're going to open up this. So the control box contains the main controller, which is an I double IFM controller. And of course, it, it contains the MVEC, which is a multi-vehicle uh, electrical center. In other words, a fuse box. Okay, the fuse box, of course, has got different fuses, different sizes, and of course, the relays that actually uh, uh, connect to those fuses themselves. It contains, of course, the main power relay, and this is the relay that actually gets power to everything else. Some diodes here, which they are used to, uh, to suppress any kind of, uh, of um, um, uh, voltage spikes. And also we have two communication lines, the CAN Open and the J1939. So the two communication lines are the lines that actually communicate the, the, the controller with the console inside the, inside the cab of the, of the truck. Now, <clears throat> the power from the battery comes directly into the out, outside of the isolator here, and from the inside of the isolator goes directly into the, power, the main power relay. The main power relay, of course, it gives power to the to the MVEC, and then of course from here powers up everything else into the system. Now, <clears throat> the power from the battery, between the battery and the isolator, there is an 80 amp breaker that is actually there to, uh, to, uh, to help and protect the system from any kind of short. Now, all the grounds from the system, of course, they come right here on the ground isolator. And of course, from the inside, on the outside as well. So what we're going to check, uh, what we're going to check on the electrical system, of course, is to make sure that uh, if for some reason we have a function that is not operating, whether that is hydraulic uh, functions, whether that is pneumatic functions, or for that matter, if there is any lights or anything on the on the uh, on the sweeper, is actually going to be uh, checked on the on the uh, on the box here. Now, the way this works, any time that a function is actually operated, the function is actually going to be activated from inside the cab from the console. The key or the switch on the console, of course, sends a command to the controller. And the controller, of course, sends the command to the function to operate. So the MVEC actually powers up all the functions that, that, uh, that control the control box. Now, when a function is not operating, at that point, of course, the first thing that we will check is to make sure we do not have a fuse that is actually blown. Now, in order to do that, of course, In order to do that, if the fuse it is okay and is not blown, the next thing between the power out and the fuse is actually the relay. It is a possibility that the relay may be compromised. Now, all eight relays are the same. So therefore, just for troubleshooting purposes, you can actually swap the relays around to make sure that uh, that the, the relay is the problem. Now, every time, this is a CAN bus system. It's never ever poke the wires with a test light. Another point that I would like to make is that it, the wires that you see here, they're all labeled by laser print on the wire itself every four to five inches. So therefore, you can actually follow that wire pretty much wherever it goes from here to the function itself. If they're all, the, uh, all the fuses are correct and they're not blown, in order to make sure that it may be a relay issue, all you have to do is, so you disconnect the plug and underneath you can actually test the pin that connects to that particular function. 
Now, if power is coming out, that means that the relay and the fuse are okay. But if there's no power coming out of that particular pin, that means that the relay is compromised. Many times when it comes to electrical issues with the, uh, with the CAN bus system, of course, it is a possibility to where the isolators can come loose, whether that is the positive isolator or the negative. Uh, always make sure that you, the, both sides of the isolators are tight and they're not moving at all. And also make sure that every, every so often you actually inspect that for a, uh, any kind of corrosion due to, due to uh, uh, winter months. Now, uh, another thing of course is that this is the main controller right here. It has two CPUs. And of course the CPUs of course power up all different types of uh, functions du during your operation. Now, from the CPUs, of course, we have the different uh, harnesses that go all the way through to the, uh, to the system to power up or function every different option that it comes, that the sweeper is com comes with. Now, for more details, of course, for the, uh, for the different harnesses and the uh, wiring schematics, you need to refer to the wiring schematic and the manual. This is the pneumatic assembly for the M6 Avalanche. So what we see here is we have four air regulators on the left-hand side, on the right side over here. And that, of course, is the right side, uh, the right side GEO, left side GEO, the right gutter broom up and down and down pressure, and, of course, the left gutter broom up and down and down pressure. On the left-hand side of the pneumatic manifold, of course, we have the left and the right side of the main broom air cylinders. Now, on the top of here, we have three sandwich valves that control three different things. The, the, fur, the further to the front um, air valve, it controls the airbags. So when the sweeper is ready to dump, the air is actually dumped out of the, air, out of the uh, uh, airbags and allow the structure to come down and allow the sweeper to dump. The middle one, it is the, uh, the air valve that unlocks the cam locks on the, of the um, main broom air cylinders. And the one further back is actually the air valve that controls the lift lift on the elevator. We will actually go to the board and get a little closer shot and explanation on the electrical and the hydraulics.